Hello and welcome back to Tesla News. My name is Marian and I'm your host today. I'm glad to have you back here on my channel. If you are living in a country where you celebrate Thanksgiving, I do wish you a happy belated Thanksgiving and of course a wonderful weekend with your family. If you're here right now and watching my video, I'm glad to have you back here on my channel. Now let's start with Europe first and then we're going to look into Taiwan, China and more as we are looking into a rumor that Tesla could be working on its own semiconductor production. Now when it comes to Europe we do have information now that more carriers are on their way. This is no surprise but we also have already carriers that arrived in Europe especially in Barcelona and Koper. Now from Barcelona those cars are being transported to French or German and other cus customers in other countries um, with these um, trucks here. We have footages from France that really indicate that all these cars are already on their way to customers. This is very good news. Again these are not cars from Giga Berlin. Those are made in China cars and we do see a lot of black and white which indicates lots of people choosing those colors and not choosing um, the more expensive colors. Now for Giga Berlin I have information that lots of cars are going to delivery centers right now in Germany. VIN and uh, the builds are supposed to be allocated very soon to German customers. Still we see a lot of cars even transported outside of Germany which is a good, um, good news for everybody waiting outside of Germany for um, cars from Giga Berlin. Current production is estimated at close to 2,900 cars. It is steadily increasing. I do expect in like um, a week or two weeks um, announcement of a milestone to reach 3,000 cars per week. Now again um, I think Tesla is going to move into the new year maybe with close to 4,000 cars per week. Again, for everybody out there saying, um, well, I don't find it fair that Tesla might be not exporting in December. Just as a reminder, everybody, that Shanghai is doing pretty much the same. So um, Tesla is doing the same structure of logistical work um, like with China. First two months are export. Last month is just the home market. Now looking into logistics, um, we have the um, EV cargo group building a logistical center. Why do they do that and for what is it? They want to use that for battery packs. So Tesla is increasing production, but they don't have so much space to store all these battery packs. So there's a new logistical center nearby. So Tesla can kind of um, put all what they get from everywhere, if it's China, US or anywhere, um, they can put it over there and then they transport it to the factory once they need that. Now I was very surprised to see this new survey here, especially when it comes to um, the charging speed and ease of use. I always believe that Tesla is um, very good in charging speed as well as ease of use. I don't know why this survey is making actually everything so bad about Tesla especially Fastnet, InstaVolt and GridSurf supposed to be 100% um, in ease of use. I must honestly say I find that very weird. Um, but again, I don't want to say someone did something wrong here, but please let me know what you think about that. I find that a bit astonishing because I always thought that the superchargers are one of the easiest usable superchargers. Now looking into the net profit per vehicle, we do see the issue with Chinese car makers Li, Jipeng, Neo with um, a big minus here, especially Neo. Now we all know that Tesla has done the same road. They have been in a minus for a long time. But again, it really shows how efficient Tesla is with around about $9,711 um, per car. Now for Chinese car makers we are always saying in Germany well if they are coming here it's going to be very tough but if they are not able to make a lot of money this is going to be the struggle and the challenge for 2023. Now when it comes to the evaluation approach of COVID restriction and the impact on um, Tesla China there are many different opinions about it. Again right now it's not the case or not an issue for European customers. It might be an issue for delivering cars in November and December in China. So we kind of have to wait how this entire um, strategy and the restrictions um, are happening in China. Now what is the most interesting part is that Tesla seems to have set up a semiconductor company in China called 
NX semiconductor. Um, so this is actually very interesting. So um, it really looks like here um, that Tesla might be moving forward um, to actually um, do a semiconductor production in China. So I correct myself here. Um, it was named Taiwan in the beginning of the video. Um, it is China. Now, um, again, I just want to um, let you know that in um, this way, if Tesla would really do that, they would be able to make themselves much more independent um, when it comes to production, um, when it comes to any shortage in the near future. Um, so I think um, it is a wise move of Tesla to do so. It is a wise move to control the entire supply chain. We have always talked about that for many times on this channel. And I do believe that Tesla is only doing that um, because they really want to control um, the entire supply chain. They have done some um, negative um, experience when it comes to um, not getting products. And I think Tesla do knows what is happening in the next few um, years um, where a shortage could appear um, before it is appearing Tesla is already moving into the area of producing themselves a few of them. It doesn't mean that Tesla is not going to receive any semiconductors from anybody else, but they are always playing the card that they can produce stuff by themselves. So that is very important. Keep that in mind. And um, I think Tesla doing this decision is a very wise move. Now, for everybody wondering, um, when is the Tesla wave, especially for Europe, ending? Um, I can tell you that right now there are no cars um, being shipped anymore to Europe. Um, I'm not aware of Australia right now, but I believe it could happen that by December, mid-December, Tesla might already have a new carrier arriving so that Tesla is shipping already for January in Europe. We have to wait if Tesla is actually moving forward with this strategy. We do know that Tesla wants to change this entire delivery waves that are happening. So I'm very um, cautious right now because I'm not sure if Tesla will do that in December to send already new carriers to Europe or Australia, Japan, um, wherever they are exporting to. Um, this is going to be uh, very interesting and will be a development that we have to look into in detail. Now, I would like to thank you for your support as well for those who are watching my channel for a long time already. Um, I'm happy for every single person being part of this community. Um, I know it might be sometimes challenging um, to um, follow my journey on a daily basis, but I'm happy for everybody on any single person um, checking out my channel. So thank you very much for being here today. If you do need any discount on Black Friday, you can also check out tessiesupply.com. There's a lot of discounts over there. I'm glad to have you back here tomorrow. Thank you very much.